Thank you very much. That's so nice. The United States has many great diplomats, but there is truly no better ambassador for our country than our beautiful First Lady, Melania. Thank you, Melania. That was very nice. We've come to your nation to deliver a very important message. America loves Poland, and America loves the Polish people. Thank you. The Poles have not only greatly enriched this region, but Polish Americans have also greatly enriched the United States. And I was truly proud to have their support in the 2016 election. It is a profound honor to stand in this city by this monument to the Warsaw Uprising and to address the Polish nation that so many generations have dreamed of, a Poland that is safe, strong, and free. <laughs> President Duda and your wonderful First Lady Agata have welcomed us with the tremendous warmth and kindness for which Poland is known around the world. Thank you. I sincere, and I mean sincerely, thank both of them and to Prime Minister Shedwo a very special thanks also. We are pleased that former President Lech Walesa, so famous for leading the Solidarity Movement, has joined us today also. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of all Americans, let me also thank the entire Polish people for the generosity you have shown in welcoming our soldiers to your country. These soldiers are not only brave defenders of freedom, but also symbols of America's commitment to your security and your place in a strong and democratic Europe. We are proudly joined on stage by American, Polish, British, and Romanian soldiers. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. President Duda and I have just come from an incredibly successful meeting with the leaders participating in the Three Seas Initiative. To the citizens of this great region, America is eager to expand our partnership with you. We welcome stronger ties of trade and commerce as you grow your economies. And we are committed to securing your access to alternate sources of energy so Poland and its neighbors are never again held hostage to a single supplier of energy. <laughs> Mr. President, I congratulate you along with the President of Croatia on your leadership of this historic Three Seas Initiative. Thank you. This is my first visit to Central Europe as President, and I am thrilled that it could be right here at this magnificent, beautiful piece of land. It is beautiful. Poland is the geographic heart of Europe, but more importantly, in the Polish people, we see the soul of Europe. Your nation is great because your spirit is great and your spirit is strong. For two centuries, Poland suffered constant and brutal attacks. But while Poland could be invaded 
and occupied and its borders even erased from the map, it could never be erased from history or from your hearts. In those dark days, you have lost your land, but you never lost your pride. So it is with this true admiration that I can say today that from the farms and villages of your countryside to the cathedrals and squares of your great cities, Poland lives, Poland prospers, and Poland prevails. Despite every effort to transform you, oppress you, or destroy you, you endured and overcame. You are the proud nation of Copernicus. Think of that. Chopin, St. John Paul II, Poland is a land of great heroes. And you are a people who know the true value of what you defend. The triumph of the Polish spirit over centuries of hardship gives us all hope for a future in which good conquers evil and peace achieves victory over war. For Americans, Poland has been a symbol of hope since the beginning of our nation. Polish heroes and American patriots fought side by side in our War of Independence and in many wars that followed. Our soldiers still serve together today in Afghanistan and Iraq, combating the enemies of all civilization. For America's part, we have never given up on freedom and independence as the right and destiny of the Polish people, and we never, ever will. Our two countries share a special bond forged by unique histories and national characters. It's a fellowship that exists only among people who have fought and bled and died for freedom. The signs of this friendship stand in our nation's capital. Just steps from the White House, we've raised statues of men with names like Pulaski and Kosciuszko. The same is true in Warsaw, where street signs carry the name of George Washington and a monument stands to one of the world's greatest heroes, Ronald Reagan. And so I am here today not just to visit an old ally, but to hold it up as an example for others who seek freedom and who wish to summon the courage and the will to defend our civilization. The story of Poland is the story of a people who have never lost hope, who have never been broken, and who have never, ever forgotten who they are. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Such a great honor. This is a nation more than 1,000 years old. Your borders were erased for more than a century and only restored just one century ago. In 1920, in the miracle of Vistula, Poland stopped the Soviet army bent on European conquest. 
Then, 19 years later, in 1939, you were invaded yet again, this time by Nazi Germany from the West and the Soviet Union from the East. That's trouble. That's tough. Under a double occupation, the Polish people endured evils beyond description. The Katyn Forest Massacre, the occupations, the Holocaust, the Warsaw Ghetto, and the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, the destruction of this beautiful capital city, and the deaths of nearly one in five Polish people. A vibrant Jewish population, the largest in Europe, was reduced to almost nothing after the Nazis systematically murdered millions of Poland's Jewish citizens, along with countless others during that brutal occupation. In the summer of 1944, the Nazi and Soviet armies were preparing for a terrible and bloody battle right here in Warsaw. Amid that hell on earth, the citizens of Poland rose up to defend their homeland. I am deeply honored to be joined on stage today by veterans and heroes of the Warsaw Uprising. What great spirit. We salute your noble sacrifice, and we pledge to always remember your fight for Poland and for freedom. Thank you. Thank you. This monument reminds us that more than 150,000 Poles died during that desperate struggle to overthrow oppression. From the other side of the river, the Soviet armed forces stopped and waited. They watched at the, as the Nazis ruthlessly destroyed the city, viciously murdering men, women, and children. They tried to destroy this nation forever by shattering its will to survive. But there is a courage and a strength deep in the Polish character that no one could destroy. The Polish martyr, Bishop Michael Kozel, said it well, more horrifying than a defeat of arms is a collapse of the human spirit. Through four decades of communist rule, Poland and the other captive nations of Europe endured a brutal campaign to demolish freedom, your faith, your laws, your history, your identity, indeed, the very essence of your culture and your humanity. Yet through it all, you never lost that spirit. Your oppressors tried to break you, but Poland could not be broken. And when the day came on June 2nd, 1979, and one million Poles gathered around Victory Square for their very first mass with their Polish Pope. That day, every communist in Warsaw must have known that their oppressive system would soon come crashing down. They must have known it at the exact moment during Pope John Paul II's sermon when a million Polish men, women, and children suddenly raised their voices in a single prayer. A million Polish people did not ask for wealth. They did not ask for privilege. Instead, one million Poles sang three simple words, we want God. In those words,